Hello everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to control the robotic arm that we have been working on when we exported it from the SOLIDWORKS to URDF format and then we decreased their STL files for collision check. So before going on, first uh, we will sort source our workspace. <coughs> I have named my workspace as tutorial workspace. You can name it whatever you want and uh, I have the package if, if I go so I have this GP7 package uh, which is a meta package and under this we have two packages and I have moved the uh, the Vivo URDF file and the GP visualization files so here you can see we have URDF folders and I have the URDF file here so what we can do is we can first see uh, first see where we left off last time so if we, if we ROS launch uh, GP7 visualization gazebo launch file uh, we will see that uh, it will open up and because gazebo is a simulation environment and we are, we are actually simulating um, physics and uh, uh, more importantly gravity and we added mass tags in our uh, and basically URDF export, exporter added mass tags in our robotic arm that's why the robot arm will fall off as you can see here so uh, currently it's like uh, uncontrollable robot arm so it's like if you have your motor off and your, and your motor will, uh, motors are power off in real life and there are no brakes on the motor <coughs> so due to gravity the robotic arm will fall off <coughs> excuse me so um, what we are going to do now we are going to use ROS control and uh, so ROS control is basically a so ROS control is basically a ROS con uh, controller manager which also provides different kinds of controllers. Uh, so for example low level position controllers, velocity controllers or effort controllers which are effort controllers are basically uh, torque controllers or current controllers or um, if you have prismatic joint they are force controller. So what they do is basically they provide this uh, control manager and uh, so uh, it helps later on if we want to uh, like for simple position controller we can simply use any node and we can make position controllers but if you want to use high level controller for example trajectory controllers then ROS controllers helps a lot and now because we are we do not have a real robot we are actually simulating so we need to have this ROS controller talk to our simulator which is gazebo and the way it does it is basically gazebo provides uh, lib uh, so gazebo has their own api which is uh, lib gazebo underscore dev it's, it's a c++ api where you can uh, where you can sort of simulate or simulate uh, the robots using uh, programming so there is this package called gazebo ROS control which does the same thing it's basically reads uh, it's uh, it reads uh, control uh, URDF from the parameter server uh, and then it sees what uh, what joints are movable and then according to whatever command ROS controller sends uh, whatever uh, actually the command ROS controller sends instead of sending it to our real hardware we send it to uh, this gazebo ROS controller file and then that sends it back to uh, the gazebo and our robot is simulated as if it were a real robot so that's the whole thing uh, now, uh, one good thing about using Gazebo ROS control is because is that we don't have to write our own controller file or our own, we don't have to use uh, ROS uh, uh, Gazebo's API at all. Uh, so uh, they have actually compiled the code and we can simply use it. So if we open our workspace and um, so I have this uh, package open in Visual Studio Code and under, under GP7 visualization if I go under U, URDF, URDF file and open the URDF file you can see that I have added this gazebo tag and I have commented out basically I was writing it from the start and I was recording in like uh, my recording field so that's why I have I am not going to do it again uh, from the start so I will just talk and comment it and explain what it means so uh, whatever whatever we want to simulate in gazebo uh, so for example if you want to simulate um, let's say uh, gravity in gazebo we have to write in, <coughs> in for, for, for urdf we have to write it in 
our uh, in the gazebo tags. Uh, so these are basically uh, URDF is basically like uh, markup language. So we have to use these tags. So for gazebo, we use gazebo tags, and then we are adding this plugin, which whose its, its name is gazebo ROS control, and the file name is lib gazebo ROS control dot so file. So so file is basically compiles C plus plus file. It's uh, a short for shared object, and uh, because this. Uh, gazebo ROS control uh, takes a, uh, takes a lot of parameters. So these parameters are basically read through these uh, markup tags. Uh, tag. Uh, so one of them is robot namespace. So we can have different robots. So uh, they they can all be using ROS control. ROS control. So we need to define uh, namespace for each robot. So namespace is basically uh, the prefix that's attached to each uh, topic name. So we are gonna be using uh, GP7 robot for the, uh, it's the namespace for the robot we are gonna use. It. You can put anything here, basically. Then robot sim type we are going to be use default robot hardware sim type and uh, legacy mode is basically we need to uh, turn it on. One more thing that I have to tell you is that I am using Gazebo ROS 7. Oh, sorry, Gazebo Gazebo 9. So if I check my version, it says Gazebo 9. Uh, ROS Fanatec normally comes with Gazebo 7.0.0 and that's a little that has a lot of bugs in it so either uh, sort of upgrade it to Gazebo 9 or update it to 7.1.16 I think so that has a little uh, less bugs as opposed to 7.0.0 version 7.0.0 So once we add these uh, tags in in our Gazebo file, so now the problem is this: uh, what how this plugin works is basically we upload this URDF in our in our parameter server. So our parameter server is basically um, it's sort of like global variables that are uh, sort of like a bag for ROS. Uh, so you put all the variables that you want to later change on at runtime. Uh, and it's like system uh, environmental variables for ROS so you can change them, you can read them in different nodes so uh, all the URDF and ROS are basically uh, sort of uploaded into the parameter server and we'll see how we can uh, we can access this so this libgazebo ROS control file basically reads this parameter server uh, read uh, robot description file which is this URDF from parameter server and it has to know which joints are movable uh, and which joints are fixed. So in our uh, so in our uh, environment, basically we have uh, two fixed. Uh, we have one fixed joint which is base joint, and uh, we have six movable joints which are revolute joints. So we have to uh, tell this libgazebo libgazebo ROS control that we have uh, these are the revolute joints that we want to move. Now there is one more thing is that we need to because it's libgazebo is written for all three different kinds of controller uh, position controller um, velocity controller and effort controller we, all, we also need to tell uh, this uh, libgazebo file uh, which type of controller we are using so it can use that uh, the appropriate uh, uh, API uh, command for gazebo so for example, if we are going to use the position controller, so uh, uh, internally this file will ask uh, joints to uh, set their position. If we are going to use effort controller, it will ask it to move uh, set force. So, uh, so we tell these things uh, using a transmission tag. So I append these transmission tags at the end of this long URDF file. So. I'm gonna show you. So I actually wrote it for all six, and I'll just uncomment it and explain one to you. So transmission tags is basically a tag that is read by this libgazebo file, and first we can assign a name to it. So I'm, I'm just saying P1, like you can say transmission one or whatever, but just be clear that they should have distinct. Then the transmission type, it's a simple transmission type, so you have to define it here. Then a joint name, so this is very important parameter. So you have to, you have this joint name should exactly match the joint that you are trying to uh, simulate. So we have six joints, that's why, that's why we have six transmission tags. 
and each transmission type we have different joints so the first joint name is joint S1 the second joint name is joint L2 uh, and we saw that how we uh, sort of name these joints so basically this should match with the, this should be exactly the exactly same as the joint names then the hardware within the joint tags we have hardware interface and this hardware interface basically tells if we are using position joint interface or velocity joint interface or effort joint interface so i'm just using position joint interface so i'm going i'm going to write hardware interface and position jo position joint interface now there is this thing that if you follow this tutorial on the zebo website they say that you have to write for example here um in hardware interface they wrote uh, effort joint interface and they did not append, uh, prefix anything before it so you have to prefix this um, hardware interface and then forward slash and then position joint interface because that's how this new file reads it and i'm going to show you how where it reads these uh, transition tags so then we have to add this actuator tag uh, and we have to uh, write a name for it similar to how we wrote the name for uh, transmission tag and it will be similar to the, like the hardware interface will be similar to joint position position joint interface and the this is the mechanical reduction ratio so basically if we were simulating it and if we were not simulating it and we were using real robot so that would be helpful here this would be helpful here but now currently we can just write one and uh, we are going to do the same thing for all six joints so i did it for all six joints you can see that just be sure that this joint name is uh, like exactly the same as the above joints you use and the second important thing is this hardware interface should be similar for all six of them like you can have different uh, interfaces so for example uh, first two joints can be position control the last two joints can be effort control and like that but then you won't be able to use uh, for example joint trajectory controller for all six joints uh, so joint trajectory controller if you're using you can use position joint trajectory controller so you can't use all six joints because two, uh, only two of the those joints are position control and other three are other four are different types of controller so what what do i mean by this position joint interface and, and join, uh, like uh, effort joint interface so if we go under the github repository of the zero ross control and uh, we go in the default robot hardware sim no no not the actually source folder so i was actually reading this and like it's really good if you if you're using some if you're using some github and uh, github repository and you should always read it uh, i think they move this one moment yeah so here it is so here it reads robot name is space get name get element i think this is this is not a complete file so let me check one minute so it says go to ross simulation this is the ross issue for to see this package is integrated ross controller architecture We are wasting so much time on this, but let's hope that it's worthwhile. Yeah. So if you see here, it reads the transmission tag, and uh, here it reads uh, these transmission interface tags. 
and it's not, it did not load the whole file because I'm running this in uh, virtual environment, virtual OS, so that's why it's causing this much problem. But you can go on this raw um, simulation uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub, and you can see this that how it sends. Uh, uh, I really wanted, yeah. So if the hardware interface is uh, effort, effort. F effort joint interface or hardware interface effort joint interface uh, so it's basically register it here and then later on it will send on I think if I actually switch back to my uh, windows version so I opened the same repository here and uh, so this registers the uh, hardware interface joint handle, uh, position interface and velocity interface and then in the update function set patterns uh, here it register and write simulates let's see, let's see yeah so it's, so here you can see it's set velocity and uh, set force and uh, the above it will be set position yes set position so like this is basically the gazebo api which it uses to set positions based on the positions that we send and basically we don't send this cross controller signs and uh, it uses that plugin and how this, this is how basically it works so we're gonna Close this. Now we have updated our. Uh, so this is how we are going to update our. Um, URDF. Now the problem is if we use the same gazebo launch file. So we have we have been using this gazebo launch file, and what it does basically is basically launches. world and then it starts spawns the URDF model with the name of GP7 underscore robot so in this whole launch file we are actually not uploading the URDF to the ROS param server so what will happen if we use this launch file now is uh, the launch file will complain that we are looking for robot description but there is no robot description in the parameter server so let me just close this one so this is the same launch file and I'm, I'm gonna so just be sure that I'm using the same terminal so I have sourced it before that's why it's working if I have to use another terminal I have to source it or I can add it in the bash rc file but I'm not going to do that so see now the gazebo will not open and after some time uh, you can see that it's saying gazebo ROS control plugin is waiting for the model URDF in parameter server in the parameter robot description on ROS param server so it's not actually sort of uh, it's because we did not load it so it will not find it and if we we can check basically if there is a robot description so if we say ROS param list so there are different parameters but there is no robot description shorthand to find it is basically if we write grab and if there is no robot parameters so similarly we can see that there is use sim time so if we say use sim so it will find this uh, parameter so what we have to do is basically rewrite our uh, gazebo launch file uh, one way we can do it is basically I don't like to delete files so I'm gonna keep it here I'm gonna make a new file and say gazebo uh, mm, control 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 gazebo dot launch for example so we are going to be adding
we are going to start this file with launch because it's a launch file so we have to start this as a launch tag and uh, so while I'm top typing I, I can't hold my uh, so I'll try to keep it like this <laughs> okay so first we have to uh, start the uh, start the gazebo in, a, in an empty world uh, so we can see from this gazebo file that how it does it basically we can use this include and launch file gazebo ross launch and this like and uh, this dollar sign basically finds it if we write find it finds the Digo ROS package and uh, under that package under launch file uh, under launch folder basically we use empty.world lot of arguments that we can pass to this launch file uh, so for example pause use time and all that but uh, currently I am not interested so I am just gonna close this tag so this only this file will what, will, what it will do is basically it will start the gazebo in, a, in an empty world so for example if we start this now run ROS launch GP7 visualization control and start this file so basically it will own it should while processing okay okay so I made this mistake I add it will start gazebo in without anything because we did not load any we did not spawn any model in it so it's an empty world right now just to speed things up I'm gonna pause the V2 and I'm gonna write and then I can I will edit again so I've written this uh, I've written this file so let's see First, we saw that how including this file of the zero from the zero uh, package it starts the zero in, in an empty world. Uh, the second uh, is basically it, uh, sends the URDF to ROS parameter server. So param is basically a uh, tag which we can use in the dot launch file, and uh, the name is the name that is used for this parameter. It's a ROS description file and it takes this uh, text file which basically how it, it how, like the file path can be as follow uh, so we search find this ROS gazebo gp7 visualization package that's why uh, sourcing the uh, world, uh, workspace is very important so whenever we source it it comes into the global scope then we use uh, we go under the URDF package so basically what it does is basically it looks this package and then it goes under the URDF package and under URDF package is the URDF file and it finds this package and that's how we uh, we bring it to the robot uh, into the parameter server the third thing is spawner so it spawns this using this this robot description we spawn the robot we basically call the robot into the gazebo uh, environment so we started it uh, gazebo in the empty world uh, but we need uh, the robot in there so what we use is basically a urdf spawner now from the gazebo ROS package so if you want to see where we are using these packages you can simply do this so if you run ROS run gazebo and if you see these are the launch uh, ROS nodes that are available so in this we have uh, spawn model uh, so we have this 
spawn mod model from here and uh, we use this type spawn model and it takes a, a, a lot of arguments but uh, basically we are loading URDF or we are spawning, uh, spawning the model from the URDF and uh, it's, it's, it's going to take, it's going to read this URDF from the robot parameter server called URDF robot description the model name will be GP robot, GP7 robot and uh, it will be placed or it will be spawned at uh, 0, 0, 0 position globally. You can also uh, sort of uh, tell uh, the orientation of the robot, uh, how it is spawned but we don't need to. Uh, just to be like just to show you that it works, I'm gonna write the name of this instead of GP robot, I'm gonna say GP7. And uh, don't worry about the other file. Other Example, run this again. You see that it reads uh, now, it, it launches uh, and uh, it does not launch really fast. Otherwise, I'll show you that it basically falls, the robot falls. Uh, still, it falls like because, like you see, but it's not jumbled up, it's basically. Are in control, but uh, we are not sending any command to the joints, so that's why it's not uh, standing up. One more thing to see is if you go under this inspector, uh, this uh, tree, uh, and you drop down models, you will see that the name of the robot is GP7 instead of uh, GP underscore robot. So we can basically set it from this launch file. This video is getting about 27 minutes, so I'm just gonna do a final thing. So we need to. Uh, so basically, we added uh, ROS controllers, and our plugin knows that we are going to use uh, position controllers. But our ROS controller controller manager does not know what kind of controllers we are going to use. So uh, for ROS controller side, what we have to do is basically we have to write a ROS controller file, a controller file. So under the under the config file, I have written this join controllers file. So how it's written is basically I'll, I'll explain one, and basically it's the same for all six joints. So first, uh, it's a dot yml file. So you can you can make this file under config folder. So normally, what extra files are made under configuration folder or other other kind of folder in the package that you can that you're using. So we, because the namespace of the because the namespace of uh, our robot is GP7 robot underscore robot that we specified in the URDF under uh, when we added the Gazebo plugin uh, GP robot seven. So I'm gonna use this namespace and then uh, after one indentation I added this joint state controller. So this is the name of the controller that we are going to spawn uh, similar to how we spawn the model this is the type of uh, and then after once I do this then it's already indented uh, identified so the type of the controller is joint state controller joint state controller the joint state controllers are basically are not actually controllers they, are, they actually publish the topic that, that tells what is the current position speeds and uh, talks of the joints they are not like they are not controller controllers they are basically reporting are the joint states so the publish rate for them is 100 100 hertz so this is basically the joint state in the joint controller so this is for the joint one uh, so i have named it joint one post controller so the type of the type of it is position controller joint position controller if you remember we added transmission as hardware interface joint position joint position uh, interface uh, position joint interface and uh, the joint type I have to specify so I'm gonna say joint S1 similarly I did the same for others and I, I this is the PID tag where I added PID value I mean it does not affect that much because uh, in physical 9 I think it does not take this into account uh, but yeah so we can add these uh, once we add this what we have to do is we have to uh, we have to load this 
I forgot. Uh, so we added uh, this robot description file in the parameter server and to check if it's loaded. So first of all, this is the proof of it that it loaded. Uh, another way to check it is basically look at the ROS param. So if we see ROS param list, so it's gonna be a really really big list, and we can see that there is ROS ROS robot description. And uh, if we do robot uh, ROS param set oh sorry get and the same robot description so it will print out the whole urdf file in the terminal so you can see it's basically the whole urdf file uh, because it's a markup language to program so programming can read it like you can read it through programming really easily like reading it it's not more human readable right now like it is human readable but it's not does not make a lot of sense so after that, so this is how we added this uh, these control. Like we have to upload uh, these controller file, this controller file, into the ROS parameter server, so we can spawn them, similar to how we spawn our model. So this line is basically what it does. This is what it does. <coughs> so it, uh, it it it's a ROS param. It's similar to param basically, and uh, we can lo load this file. So uh, it takes this file from it finds this package gp7 underscore visualization and then under config and join controllers dot yml file which is basically this file uh, this file and it loads it into in this command basically loads it into the ROS param. So one way to check it is basically if I go and clear this out and write ROS param list grab control. I see that there are a lot of controller. So first thing to note is basically all of these controllers have a prefix which is GP7 underscore robot. That's the prefix that comes from this file. And it's important that this prefix is exactly the same as this prefix because if it does not match then it will be problematic later on. Secondly, we see that we have joint state controller. So if we go here, uh, we have joint state controller here, and it, it's it's type and it's published state. Just to confirm, we will get we will see what's the current value of published state. So I'm just gonna copy it and uh, ROS param get this. So it's hundred, as you can see. Yeah, I don't need to like do this for all of them. I just know that these values are basically the same. These values. So now uh, the controller manager, which is basically, so we are going going to spawn these controllers, and then we can actually simulate this robot and control their joints. So this is the last step of it. So what we are going to do is basically we're going to start another node from our launch file, and the name of the launch uh, node is. Uh, controller spawner. I can actually name it anything I like because these name nodes are count out here. So if I write ROS node list, you can actually it stop. Oh, sorry, here it is. Uh, controller spawner. So it's also under the same uh, namespace because of this. So I added this Gazebo namespace here. So it's from the package controller manager, the namespace is gp7 underscore robot because we have to keep the same namespace for uh, throughout and then once we move on to move it controllers and move it we have to keep doing the same thing for uh, that also. So the type is a spawner and then we are spawning seven model, uh, seven controllers like one is joint state controller and then six different position controllers. So once we do that, we have this robot account which is like this, okay. So we do ROS topic list, grab controller, we have this command if we do ROS topic echo gp7 underscore robot join one pose. Okay. 
okay it's not working i think first we have to uh, see what actually it works <laughs> uh, first uh, because my computer is almost dying so first i have to check why this robot falls off and i actually know the reason why it fell off so um, i'm going to quit and uh, i'm going to stop the video debug it and then i'll show you what check the file and the, the only mistake that i did was uh, this basically so in so we know that urdf is basically a markup language and it defines the serial uh, connection between using uh, parent child hierarchy so we had this base link which is which was the fixed link and uh, the first fixed link in the urdf file should not have inertial parameters should not have inertial tag so inertial tag basically defines uh, uh, moment of inertia and mass and all that so we have to have this base link because it's the base link from the uh, robot uh, model so what i did is basically so the so the problem is basically the first link should not have inertial tag so to remedy this what we can do is basically we can add another tag another link and it's a simple link as uh, uh, world i named it world you can name it base zero or whatever and then i added this joint this joint is basically connecting this world link and this base link in this parent child uh, parent child relationship so the name of the joint link is joint w and it's a fixed type it should be a fixed type because the base link or the like the base of base of the robot should be a fixed joint type and then i have this and if you see this this link does not have any inertial tag however this base link do have inertial link do have inertial tag like it has mass and all that it does not affect our simulation at all so if i just save this and you see that our robot is now standing up correctly now to control the joints because we have loaded up everything and it's in this so i will just first of all i'll clear it up so, so if i publish this uh, to join 3 so join 3 is basically 1 2 3 so this this part should move so let's see if it moves or not it's working basically it's not continuous it like the video does not show it continuous because i'm running very slow computer so if i do it on minus 5 okay so please remember uh, i'm not sure if my viewers can know how to publish on topics so to do that is simple for example first you have topic you are going to publish so i am going to publish on this topic so i am just going to copy it and uh, if i write info and uh, this topic ok last topic list grab uh, controller let's say i want to publish on that on this topic but i don't know the topic type or the message type so i can do info in this and it will tell me that the type is float which is the which is basically the position of the joint it's a simple controller where you send the set point as uh, from the topic and it will move to that position so for example if i do ross topic publish this 
join cross topic publish gp7 robot join one force controller and if i keep pressing tab it will show me this data type and if i want to move it to one and the first join will move will rotate this is all good but the problem is that i won't be able like if i'm going to do uh, if i'm going to if i want to move this robot in a trajectory i can't do it because i have to publish on each joint separately from the topic or if i or i have to write a note for it uh, maybe a python probably a python note where i have to where i access these topics and then publish on these topics continuously in a while loop that's one way to do it but uh, we went through the whole ross controller thing and uh, what's the point of doing this much thing if we want to just use topics separately so here is uh, this is where uh, the ross controller is very useful we can add joint trajectory controller which are basically uh, position controllers uh, and we can send uh, commands and it will sort of make trajectories and follow these trajectories but before doing that there is one more thing that i have to tell you and that's basically uh, the joint state controller so if you look under this ross topic uh, list uh, joints so you ross topic list grab state joints yeah state sorry. so you can see that it's publishing under ross topic joint states this is basically the joint state controller which we can see it will continuously publish these values so if you see at join 2 so it's basically so uh, if we publish one time only for now so uh, we move join s join 1 to 1 Position. This is basically one, two, three, four. So this one, two, three, and four. So this is this is almost one uh, radian. Uh, now we are gonna add joint trajectory controller and see how that works, and then we'll uh, finish this video. So I'm gonna close this, open my config uh, controller config file, and. Basically, very simple. Uh, so for this, I'm gonna name it uh, arm controller. So uh, under arm controller, then we have I have to define the type of it. So it's a position controllers, and uh, it's basically joint trajectory controller. And uh, because it's joint trajectory controller, so now it won't have one joint. It it will control multiple joints. so uh, i can i can give provide names in this way uh, in, in list way or in array way i will do it in list so the first is joint at joint s1 uh, second is joint lu l2 uh, third is joint u3 I know, like we made a mistake initially because I should have named like five should come first and then B or R should come later and four before. So uh, uh, that's a mistake we I made while exporting the URL. So now I have these joints. Like there are different other parameters that you can see from the uh, if you Google joint controllers, uh, you'll be able to see different parameters. They have gains and turn. I'm just going to keep it simple here. So this is the controller that we have to launch into the uh, into the parameter server. So this file will be added into the parameter server. So this controller will be in the parameter server, but we have to uh, sort of uh, um, I'm just going to So I'm just going to delete this one. So because I'm using all the controllers in ARM controller, so all the joints in the ARM controller. So 
we cannot use separate controllers then so I'm just going to say raw arm controller here it's the, it should be the same file it should be the same controller name as this so I'm just going to check one more time paste it here and I did not remove joint state controller because remember joint state controllers are basically just telling us what's the current joint position velocity efforts situations are for the joints they are not actually controlling the joint so they are more like a feedback uh, or they're like the data that you can receive from your sensors uh, for example encoders or all sensors so if I, I launch the same file again uh, okay. so uh, before uh, so one way now uh, we have that we have loaded a joint trajectory controller and is joint trajectory controller basically starts an action server and uh, this is necessary because later on we will be using this arm controller which is basically joint trajectory controller uh, in move it we cannot use single joint control single joint controllers for move it so once it loads it has. so what we can do now if you want to control joints one way to do it is using RQT so RQT is this plugin that is uh, sort of that is written over QT. Uh, so I'm just gonna run it from here. If I just write RQT loss run, so it will start this because I've been using it, so it starts this. Another way to start this is uh, using ROS run. So I'll show you how it starts. So if you write a ROS run RQT underscore and if you keep pressing it you will see there are a lot of different plugins for uh, RQT and you can even write your own plugin what we need is basically joint trajectory controller so I'm just gonna say joint trajectory controller and joint trajectory controller again and it will start the same plugin again yeah so it did start the same plugin again uh, we are sort of increase Now this is really interesting because now we can control the joints from sliders. Like this is one of the advantage of using it. So under controller manager, I added controller that controller manager that we spawn from the launch file, and under controller we added this controller and we loaded this controller in controller manager. So if I connect this robot and if I move this, and uh, this should move, so it will take ages to move. Come on. Believe me, it will move. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's moving like this. So you can actually play around with this, and uh, just be sure that through the simulations, if it hits the ground, it will sort of fly off in the. Uh, in the sky so if you do this you will be able to control it from here uh, one more thing about joint trajectory controller is that if you now uh, ROS, if you list the ROS topics and grab only controller uh, you will be able to see that instead of now we also we have a command topic but we also have this uh, feedback goal position result and status joint trajectory controller action server uh, if you are not sure what is joint trajectory controller action server and action client you should look it up in the basics of ROS uh, um, so if you want to publish uh, like if you want to control these joints from ROS topic publish uh, from uh, like from here uh, ROS topic on controller will be very difficult because it's a joint trajectory joint trajectory controller uh, message and it's a lot of things that we have to fill in here uh, so it's better if we use this uh, in uh, python from python or from c++ and write a node and then control it from there but uh, this is like for starting we can we can do this from here uh, from we can control it from rpt joint trajectory controller which actually does the same thing it uh, it uh, subscribe to it publishes to this topic 
one way to look at it is basically if you if you do ross topic uh, uh, sorry ross node list sorry uh, ross topic uh, ross topic uh, uh, info hmm. ross topic info gp7 robot arm controller command If you see, it's pub the publisher for this topic is RQT GUI node. So if I close this, if I first always disable the controller and then move it. And then if I close this and I I so you see that there is, there are no publisher for this. And the subscriber are basically the uh, gazebo because. That's all for today's video. Uh, it's almost one hour video, so I hope you learned a lot of things from it. If you know, uh, just shoot me a message and I'll try to help you as much as possible. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it if possible. I'll be updating these uh, codes on the GitHub, on the same GitHub repository that I did last time. So, have uh, fun. Bye bye.